shape. So, the season started. Jordan wasn't rusty. In the first two weeks of the season, Jordan scored over 30 in four of his eight games. In the ninth, he poured 44 on the Jazz, mm. picking up right where he left off in 1998. Mm. After the first 10 games, he averaged 27.4 points, 6.3 rebounds, Jeez. 4 assists, and 2 steals. Jordan was going crazy. Satisfied and said he did the right thing, but he needed the confirmation and the assurance that his coach still believed in his abilities. Two nights later, he responded in a big way. He scored the first three times he had the ball, and he finished the game with 51 points. Damn. 21 for 38 from the field. This dude is different. <laughs> he had a six-point game. Mentally, I'm thinking he's broken. He came back with 51 as an old-ass dude at like the end of his career. Okay, I get it. What's good, YouTube? It's the boy back where it's Stevie Body Rack to Michael Jordan, bro. You know we had to do it. Y'all said it was too much of Larry Bird going on. Y'all said it's too much of Michael Jordan going on. Y'all said it's too much of LeBron James going on. I don't know what y'all want, bruh. But hey, we dropped a Michael Jordan banger today. Uh, how good was Wizards Michael Jordan? That's the topic of today. You know what I'm saying? We all talk about the Bulls, how crazy he was, 3 p.m. twice, all of that. But I heard he was kind of washed when he got to the Wizards. Was he washed? Was he not? Was he really that dude? Was he washed for Michael Jordan's standards, but still a nice ass NBA player? You know what I'm saying? Like, let me know in the comment section. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Hey, 95% of y'all not subscribed, so hit the subscribe button below. Hit the notification button. It'll mean the world to me. For Michael Jordan, we go for a slight thousand likes in 48 hours. Let's just do that. And hey, <laughs> let's go. Last Dance was one of the hottest documentaries this year. Even though the real last dance of Michael Jordan happened five years after the story in the dock. In 2001, Jordan unretired for the second time and suited up in a blue Wizards jersey. Some people say that his two Wizards years tarnished his legacy, and some praised MJ even more. So what's the real truth, and how- Let me know, Faroda, what he just said makes a lot of sense. If in your scenario, in your perfect world, if you were like a celebrity, an athlete, or whatever, if you had a great ass career in Chicago, would you just stop? You know what I'm saying? Just leave it like that? Or would you just keep playing because you love the game and even though you're not as good, like do you think it tarnishes your legacy or do you think you just love the game and you're gonna keep playing? Because I know some friends that would just stop. They just want they just want anything you think about them to be the highlight of the career. You know what I'm saying? Let me know in the comment section. How good was Jordan in Washington? Was he really washed? Or did he prove once more that he's the GOAT? Watch Go. the, of the video to find out. After the last dance. In 1998, MJ and Phil Jackson went to the karaoke bar. And Jordan chose The Careless Whisper by George Michael and sang, I'm never gonna dance again the way I danced with you. Looking Ooh. gently in Phil's direction. Okay, I totally made that up. But Jordan indeed's- Oh my. Bro, I really just believe that entire thing he just said, bro. Like, <laughs> this is why you can't believe Eric Bell on the internet, bro. Come on, let's get back to the video. ...said that he wouldn't be playing unless it's for Phil Jackson. Since the Bulls GM Jerry Krause didn't want to re-sign Phil, and Scottie Pippen wanted to get his first massive paycheck, the Bulls fell apart. And MJ fulfilled his promise and retired for the second time. I didn't know that. And then in January of 2000, Michael came back to the NBA. Hey! But he didn't wear a jersey. Instead... He slipped into a suit and tie as a minority owner and president of basketball operations for the Washington Wizards. The team was bad and finished that year with a 29-53 and 53 record. And they got even worse next year with 10 wins less. But there was hope on the horizon. They got the number one pick. MJ had the chance to get a blue chip prospect. And he famously opted for Kwame Brown, a number one high school player in the country. Jordan saw something in Kwame. And he believed he is the cornerstone that will immediately turn the Wizards into a winning ball club. Okay. Also, he knew a guy pretty good at basketball. A guy who was on the floor with the team at every practice and who was itching to make another comeback. It's an itch that still needs to be scratched. And I want to make sure this itch doesn't bother me for the rest of my life. I'm just going to play the game of basketball that I love. It's not about the money. Indeed, it wasn't about the money. Jordan the GM gave Jordan the player the smallest salary on the Wizards. And MJ... Who the hell just blocked Michael Jordan? He look like a point guard too. Who's that? Let me know in the comment section, please. Jordan the GM gave Jordan the player the smallest. Number one for Charlotte Hornets. This dude look mad familiar. The, the screen's a little, you know what I'm saying, washy right now. 
Who is that, bro? I know I know who that is, bro. Damn, who is? Whatever. Gallery on the bro, I forgot who that is, bro. Gave all of it to the victims of the 9-11 terrorist attack. It I'm really sure. was just about the game for him. And because of that competitive fire that never ceased to burn, and that voice in the head who kept telling him he is still better than the young guys who took over the league from him. How good were the Wizards? The Wizards had a young Richard Hamilton, who was Ooh. in third year, and who was trying. Did he have uh like glasses on or something? You know what I'm saying? Like hoop and shades or no nah, hoop and goggles or something like that. To be one of the most promising shooting guards in the league, and that was about it when it comes to quality players with potential. The rest were either older veterans on their way out or young role players. Of course, there was also Kwame Brown, who by the time the season started was already crushed by Jordan, who insulted him at any chance he got. Jordan Damn. never changed his ways. And just like he trash-talked all of his opponents, teammates, and Jerry Krause, he was maybe even worse to Kwame. A 19-year-old kid couldn't take it, and he played with zero confidence and was basically unusable on the court. Nobody on the team averaged more than 10 points that year, other than Rip Hamilton and Jordan. The Wizards were the same team that won 19 games the year prior, plus Jordan and Kwame. MJ thought it would be enough to be what? competitive, but he overstated his team and himself. Return of the Mac. Michael Jordan added to the team and Kwame Brown, the number one pick, and Hamilton, I think, had the exact same wins as the year before. Damn, I know that fucked up with like Michael Jordan's mind, like heavy, bro. Before the season, Jordan was working tirelessly to get himself in shape. He trained every day with his personal trainer, Tim Grover and held private training camps with various NBA players to get himself in game shape. So, when the season started, Jordan wasn't rusty. In the first two weeks of the season, Jordan scored over 30 in four of his eight games. In the ninth, he poured 44 on the Jazz, mm. picking up right where he left off in 1998. Mm. After the first 10 games, he averaged 27.4 points, 6.3 rebounds, Jeez. four assists, and two steals. Jordan was going crazy. It seemed like he had never left as his stats were virtually the same to the 1998 regular season. Hey! He was in the MVP race and made it easy for the world to fall in love with him once again. However, sure. his play wasn't reflected in the team record. As the Wizards only notched two games in the win column, they started the season 5-12 and 12 and were at the bottom of the Eastern Conference. Also, Jordan's stellar play at the beginning of the season wasn't sustainable at the age of 38. He was still Michael Jordan, but he wasn't mm. Air Jordan anymore. Or at least not all the time. And even though his totals were still looking good, Mike became an inefficient volume scorer on a bad team. He shot 40% in those first 17 games, a landslide from his career average of 50%. MJ was still fundamentally sound. He could still see every play, and he was still six foot six, strong and confident, but he didn't have the same speed, and he didn't have the legs under him to shoot efficiently. But if you know anything about Jordan, you know here. he's losing more than anything. After those 17 games and a 5-12 and 12 record, the Wizards won nine in a row. Then they lost a couple. And in the second of those two losses, MJ had the worst game of his career. Wait, in 25 what? minutes on the floor, he shot two out of 10 and finished the game with six points, which snapped his record 866 game streak of double figures scoring. And the media went ballistic. No now, way, hold on. I'm sorry, but we gotta run that back. He had how many points? Of his career. In 25 minutes on the floor, he shot two out of 10 and finished the game with six points, which snapped- Michael, bro, I don't care how old he is. Michael Jordan had a six point game. I know that he might've retired that year or the year after, bro. I know that just, bro, mentally that probably just tore him up, bro. His record 866 game streak of double figures scoring and the media went ballistic. After the game, Jordan was down on himself. On the bus ride from the arena, he sat next to Doug Collins, whom he hired to be the coach, and asked him, do you think I can still play? Collins said, yeah, of course. I only took you out because we were down by 25 in the fourth and wanted to keep you fresh for the next game. MJ was satisfied and said he did the right thing, but he needed the confirmation and the assurance that his coach still believed in his abilities. Two nights later, he responded in a big way. He scored the first three times he had the ball, and he finished the game with 51 points. Damn. 21 for 38 from the field. This dude is different. <laughs> he had a six point game. Mentally, I'm thinking he's broken. He came back with 51 
As an old ass dude at the end of this career. Okay, you I get it. You were the oldest player ever to score 50 in an NBA game. He followed that up with a 45 point, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, 3 steal effort against the New Jersey Nets. Wait, so what happened with that 6 point game? Probably something with his wife or kid or something deep happened that nobody knows about. Because 6 points to 51 and 45 as an old dude, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, 3 steals. Nah, he's different, bro. I see why a lot of people have him as the favorite player of all time and greatest of all time in a goal and all that. That's that's crazy. That right there just shook me. Including scoring 22 points in a row during one stretch. In the game against the Cavaliers, Damn. the Wizards were down by a point with 1.6 seconds left. Michael then hit a mid-range jumper for the last buzzer beater mm. of his career. In a game against his former club, after enduring Ron Mercer's trash talk and having his jumper blocked, he responded by pinning Mercer's layup against the backboard mm. two hands and trash talking him on the way back up the court. It was a game winning play and one of the most spectacular blocks by Jordan or anyone for that matter. Mm. It was more impressive that it was done by a 39 year old who spent his last three years playing golf, drinking and smoking cigars. By the end of the season, Jordan notched back to back 40 point games but also four more games where he failed to reach double figures. And that's where the answer lies about Jordan's time with the Wizards. Yeah, he could still play. And yes, he could still be dominant. But it wasn't but not the, all the dominance time. we grew accustomed to. Yeah. And it didn't happen every game. Yeah. Jordan finished the year early due to a knee injury that required surgery. And the Wizards didn't make the playoffs with a 37-45 and 45 record. MJ played 60 games in the 2001-02 season. And he averaged 23 points, 5.7 rebounds, and 5.2 assists. Those numbers look great in a vacuum. But when you look at Jordan's efficiency, you can quickly tell he didn't have an overly successful season. Jordan took 22 shots per game, far more than he should have for a player Ooh. shooting 41% from the floor and 19% from three. He was second to last in effect. Damn, 19% from three? He's definitely just in that team with hella minutes because he's Michael Jordan. I think, I don't know, I can't, well, yeah, because he still got it, but he doesn't got it every time. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just, he's just not Michael Jordan all the time. He's just Michael Jordan sometimes. And that's basically, I just think that's all it is when it comes to how good his Wizards Michael Jordan. I think he was good, just not good all the time. And I don't know, like, Having multiple, not double digit games, 19% from um, three point line, 40% below his career average, that's okay. I don't even think that's that's deep or whatever. That's that deep or whatever. But 20, I mean, 20, like 20 plus shots a game. The field goal know, percentage bro. out of all players who qualified for the stat and 169th out of 177 qualified for true scoring percentage. Damn. The real last dance. In the offseason, Jordan the GM wanted to help Jordan the player. He traded the best young player on the team, Rip Hamilton, for a more experienced Jerry Stackhouse. Trading away Hamilton was a mistake, and Jordan once again proved his short-sightedness in making decisions. The team wasn't that much better, and the season went pretty much the same as the last. Jordan, who was a year older and was battling a lingering knee injury, still had some juice left. But he had to squeeze really hard to get a full cup, and it didn't happen all the time. He scored over 43 times, becoming the first 40-year-old to score over 40 in an NBA game. That's crazy. He also had seven more games where he failed to score 10 points. His defense wasn't at the level it once was, and numerous players took the opportunity to put up numbers against Jordan, yep. something that was unimaginable in previous years. Yep. Kobe dropped 55 on him after Jordan taunted him that he could wear the shoes, but could never fill them. Michael was more rational with his shots in the second year and shot 44% from the floor. And it was enough for 20 points, six rebounds, and 3.8 assists for the season. Jordan played in all 82 games. But once again, the team went 37 and 45 and didn't make the playoffs. The highlight of the year was definitely the All-Star game, where MJ was selected as a reserve after he rejected the offer from Allen Iverson and Tracy McGrady to take their starting spots. He ultimately accepted it from Vince Carter. At halftime, Mariah Carey performed a special tribute to him, donning dresses of both his rookie year Bulls jersey and his final year Wizards jersey. That's as crazy. his career highlights played on giant screens behind her. It was a proper send off, worthy of a star that was Michael Jordan. In the game itself, MJ didn't shoot it particularly well, 
but he did score 20 points. And most importantly, hit a tough fallaway jumper over Sean Marion to give the East the lead with less than five seconds to play. It appeared to be a game winner, but the West scored again and prevailed in overtime. Still, Jordan proved that he still belongs with the best players in the world, Fact. at least for one game, even though it was clear he wasn't the best anymore. Fact. A mediocre dessert to a great meal. If you want a recap of Jordan's time with the Wizards, you'll get different answers depending on who you ask. Jerry Stackhouse said that he wished he had never played in Washington because everything was still going through Michael Jordan, even though it was obvious he wasn't the same player anymore. Fact. Bobby Brown was miserable during Jordan's years there, and his career would have certainly been better if he didn't play with MJ as a 19-year-old. The Wizards owner Abe Poland wasn't thrilled with Jordan either, and he relieved him of his GM duties shortly after the last season of Jordan as a player. If we compare Jordan's last years to some of the other NBA greats, We'll see some similarities. The greatest players who ever did it, if they took care of their bodies, were still extremely effective Kobe at the best age. Tim Duncan was named to the All-NBA and All-Defensive team in 2015 at the age of 39. Kareem made the first team All-NBA in 86, also age 39. And he averaged 26 points in the playoffs that year. Carl Malone averaged 28 and 5 at the age of 39. So it's not unusual that Jordan was still able to play. But maybe the best quote about Jordan's Wizards years came from his What the? David. What just happened to Jordan? Did Jordan miss a wide open dunk? 8 and 5 at the age of 39. So it's not unusual that Jordan Hold was on. still able to play. But maybe the best quote about Jordan's Wizards years what? came from his agent, David Falk. I just Bro, you know how crazy it must be to be the best in the entire world? And then little things like that start happening to you, bro. You know how mentally defeated he must have been? Like, but he tries to, you know what I'm saying? Tough, Jordan, whatever. But like, bro, privately alone, this dude was probably going through it. He just blew the craziest. That's crazy, I don't think bro. it was a good dessert to a great meal. He was like 40, though, so. Mike was certified hot, and then he dropped to lukewarm. However, that last two years didn't affect his legacy. Fast, and the unathletic fast. Jordan, who had to pump fake three times to get a separation for a shot, was soon forgotten. People like to remember the good things. The image of Jordan will always be that shot over Russell and celebrating his sixth Ooh. title with a cigar in his mouth. Hey, dude's the greatest, bro. Leave a like, subscribe. Like I always say, let me know your favorite player ever in the comment section below. Let's go.